Yep. Okay. Hi. Thanks for coming. Uh, in the next 45 minutes, I will present breaking past the logic. Also, path traversal is a common problem in web security, uh, but it's still hard to apply a good security mechanism. There are lots of pitfalls and edge cases that programmers may ignore. But the only thing they care about is still dot dot slash. In this talk, we try to pay more attention on analyzing puzzle logics and path normalizations. During this process, we've, we noticed an interesting feature that could be perfectly applied on multi-layered architectures. We will detail this attack surface and give several case studies. Okay, let's go. Hi, I'm Orange, uh, from Taiwan. Taiwan is a small country in Asia. I'm now a security researcher in Dev Core. We provide the most professional rating service and penetration testing in Asia. My job is researching and finding new zero-day and attack service. I'm also the member of HitCon. We hold the largest hacker conference in Taiwan. This is our agenda today. We will first highlight the blind side on path normalization and talk about why I focus on this. By knowing the blind side, we try to review existing web frameworks and find bugs from them. We will show vulnerabilities on both Ruby on Rails and Spring Framework. Lastly, the new attack service. Of course, in order to convince this is awesome, we will give several case studies. Okay, first, let's learn a new word. Normalize. To make standard, determine the value by comparison to an item of non-standard. Uh, non-standard value. The definition is easy, but if every system has their own standards, it must be problems. And the next, why normalization? In security, it means that you need to protect something. In order to fix a bug we saw impacting business logic, it's common to apply a workaround or filter instead of patching the bug directly. To apply the filter, you need to pass the data first. But it's hard to implement a well-designed parser. Everyone follows RFC as their standard. RFC defined the specification, but didn't tell you how to implement. So the more complicated the data format, the harder it is to pass. So what's wrong with normalization? Yes, inconsistency. This is a typical dangerous pattern and easy to find problems on it. The behaviors in check must be the same as the behavior in use. Otherwise, the check function will be bypassed. It's just like my SSI talk in Black Hat last year. Finding inconsistency between URL passes and URL features, that leads to whole SSI bypass. So for the past two years, I paid more attention on the bug inconsistency. This is an interesting implementation in Java. For the same URL, there are different implementations in each operating system. In Windows, Java treats the file as UNC path, but Linux treats it as URL. The most difference between each other is the URL supports the query string, but UNC doesn't. Once we know that, there are several dangerous patterns. For example, the method get pass only return the part before the question mark. But the file system still recognizes all as its path. On the other hand, the method get file or to external phone return all the URL part. But if the check rely on the normalized result from then, we can forge a valid path to bypass the check and read arbitrary file on the Linux. Hmm? 
So back to our topic, why I target pass normalization? Because most websites handle files. Also, pass traversal is, a old, is an old problem in many web applications. But that is also the plus with lots of protections and bypasses. As I mentioned before, there are lots of dangerous patterns, so that if you can find the difference between the track and the use, you can bypass the protection. Another reason is, in large projects, the code changed too fast and lacked an overall security review. For the new commit, is there any side effect or bypass existing security mechanism? Who knows? Let's talk about Mojara. Java Server Faces is a standard on the Java e double E, but it's just a standard, needs someone to implement. So the top two implementation in the world are the My Faces by Apache and the Mojara by Oracle. While reading as advisories, I noticed a report that reviewed Mojara and find CVE 2013 CA27. The report also inspired me to dig more into the source. So with a couple of days, I find a new vulnerability. It's a very obvious path, it's, it's a very obvious path traversal. Just read the file from the query string. While I find this, I was ve I was very curious about why the advisory didn't notice that. With a little bit investigation, I find the reason. The bug was committed in 2015, but the code review was done in 2013. This points out a serious problem. Mojara is a very fundamental library, but since there is no one do a formal security review since 2015. So that's the reason to push me dig into the past normalization on web security, on web applications. So let's start our topic. First, how parsers could be failed. Here is a very obvious programming errors. Can you spot the bug? This code was, co was copied from Grails. Grails is a powerful, groovy, best web application. If you want to use Groovy as your backend language, back, uh, as your backend language, you must have heard about Grails. This is the part of static file handling. The argument relative path is attacker controllable. In order to be compatible with Windows environments, the code represses current file separator with forward slash. So, have you find the bug? Okay, the answer is the Mesa repress. Girls would like to repress column file separator with regular expression. So, girls escape the path by pattern.crowd. But was the repress used correctly? This is the prototype of Mesa repress. But in Java, repress has a big brother, and his name is repress O. Both methods are very similar, but the only difference between each other is the meaning of the first argument. The first argument in repress is the literary string to be repressed, but the other is the regular expression to be executed. Both arguments are the string type. It seems the developer used the wrong method. The pattern that code encloses the current file separator with escape Q and escape E. Because of the misuse, girls will recognize the regular expression as literal string. Yes, fails everywhere. As a result, the dot dot escape Q and escape E is equal to dot dot slash in girls. 
Even worse, the bug it caught was committed in 2014. So the bug has been there for several years. The next case is how single slash could be failed. Maybe you have set up several passes in the past, but does your pass end with a slash? This is a good question. Is it important? Yes, let me show you how single slash could be failed. This is an off by slash fail on engine X. The first time this problem be shown was in the end of 2016, and this credit to my friend Agnes. Also, this is not new. It's, it's still worth to mention. This is a good attack vector without too much people known. And the idea appears in real world again and again. In engine X, there is an alias directive, and it can define the replacement for the specific, specified location. This directive is very common in web architecture. In practical, applications such as Django or Rails are not familiar with handling static files. So it's a prevalent pattern to put engine X in front of them. But due to the lack of churn slash in the location rule, the slash static dub dub will also hit the, al the alias block. So as the result, engine X will append the remaining part to the home app static and we can traverse one label to parent directory. So how, how single slash could be failed? You can search how to serve static file with engine X on Google or Stack Overflow, and you will find numerous answer with mistakes. This problem is also common in the implementation that you need to process the path by yourself. It's just like string copying in C language. To append a slash or not is a serious problem to you. So how to find this problem in real world? We give a private bug bounty cache here. From direct accessing the access folder, engine X will return a 403 forbidden. However, when we try the slash access dot dot slash, it also returned 403. It looks like we have successfully traversed one label to parent directory. But how to prove this? We append answers slash app.js app again and check the content. Yes, the same. So now we can download all the source and configuration on the web loot. In this case, we got several sensitive files sensitive data, such as the secret key in Django and the database file. So for the past several months, I start to review the past normalization and parser part on web applications. Of course, we find several problems in diverse implementation. And here is the list. So the next section is in-depth review of existing implementations. Due to the time consideration and our new finding is more important, we will only show you two cases. The first one, direct traversal on Spring Framework. We all agree that Spring is a famous framework in Java web applications. So we start from the patch of CVE 2014, 3625. It's also a patch traversal. In order to prevent similar bugs again, Spring applied several security mechanisms. From the method name, we know Spring first check whether the path is valid or not, and use its resource on the location as the last guardian to ensure the path on the appropriate locations. This is the simplified version of method is invalid path. It's just a simple blacklist. And the most important is, if there is any dot dot in the past, Spring will normalize the past, check, and return a boolean. 
As I mentioned before, this is a dangerous pattern. Spring just rely on this bullying to protect all the instance. So if you find a problem in the clean path or inconsistency between the check and the use, you can bypass all the protection. So how clean paths work? In order to be compatible with Windows environment, it simply repress backslash to forward slash. Spring also separate the paths with the forward slash, check the element one by one, and store the result into path elements. If the element is a single dot, Spring just do nothing. But if the element is the parent directory, Spring will set a flag to remove, to remove the next item in next iteration. So in the end, Spring use the forward slash to join all the elements. Okay, that's all. Did you find the problem? Okay, the problem is Spring allow the empty element. That means you can forge an empty element in pass array. During the normalization, it will be normalized with the parent directory and cause the inconsistency with the file system. It seems to be a small problem, but the impact is huge. The table, this table shows the difference between the clean path and the file system. Due to the empty element, when there is more than one slash in the path, things start going wrong. This method is invalid path return true because there is no dot dot in the result. So Spring believed without any dot and read the file with user supplied path. So how to explore it? We clone the Spring official sample from GitHub. As you can see the payload, there are six slash normalized the next six data slash. This exploit also works on the container such as Tomcat. As a secure container, Tomcat by default enabled several security features. But this exploit perfectly bypass all restrictions. As the result, we can read up Cherry file on Windows. So, how to fix? Do not use Windows. Yeah, this is the real mitigation from Spring official website. Hmm. Excellent. As the bonus, let's talk about the code infectivity. Programmer follows, follows the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. And Spring is a popular framework under a free software license. So lots of projects refer the code from Spring. Spark is also a famous and a micro framework for web applications. In 2014, Spark want to improve their security mechanism on static file handling. But since writing a good parser is really hard, so it just copied the code from Spring. So as the result, Spark also copied a similar problem into their code base. So Spark also suffer from this vulnerability. The other case is Ruby on Rails. Spark case is the answer pipeline system in Rails, which means all static files will be managed, compiled, and served by Spark case. And of course, we find a problem here. Also, Rails only use the answer pipeline system in development mode. The default Rails command is still on the is, is still vulnerable. So you can simply reproduce the bug by just two commands, Rails new and Rails server. Due to the time consideration, I will not go into too much details. The root cause is that there is an undocumented feature in Spark case. There are several pieces in this exploit. You can check the slides after this talk. But it still was to say this is possible, possible for code execution. 
Because of the support of file skin, you can override some internal options with your query string. As an answer pipeline system, Sprocket will compile the content while processing the file. If the file extension is ERB, Sprocket will interpret the file as Ruby template engine. This feature could be combined with file upload attacks. You upload a malicious file to temp folder and execute the code by Sparkit. Okay, the boring code review part is over. You can stretch yourself a little bit. Okay, here's the cat, and let's go to the most interesting part. While I was reading the source, I noticed a feature that could be perfectly exported on multi-layered architectures. In the following patch, I will introduce the idea and several cases, including an SS control bypass in Uber and two remote core executions. By the way, I would like to thank Emerson and Binder for the open mind vulnerability disclosure and their quick response time. It's a very good experience working with them. We start with a HTTP feature, URL pass parameter. It can define information for the specif specified pass segment. Some researchers have already pointed out this feature may lead to security issues, but their concerns still depend on programming fails. When I saw this, I was thinking about how to make this feature more severe, severely. Yes, I find reverse proxy. Reverse proxy is a common, common web architecture. There are several benefits. Resource sharing, load balance, cache, and security. For example, you can share different services on the same port and send IP address. Overuse load balance to distribute the request to different backend service. As the security, reverse proxy can isolate the server from outside and configure the access control in proxy layer. This is a classic reverse proxy architecture. As I said before, it's a prevalent pattern to serve static file directly and pass the business logic to backend service. I have talked about the off by slash problem, but now we focus on the interaction between the proxy and backend servers. Nginx will serve it directly if the incoming request match the static pattern, such as files and scripts. But if, if it is the request for the business logic, Nginx will pass to backend servers. Okay, so back to our topic. What will happen when the feature makes the reverse proxy? URL pass parameter is defined in HTTP specification, but not all web servers care about it. However, Java mostly supports this feature. Reverse proxy is not a single request, single server handling architecture. The same request will be interpreted by different web servers. So the inconsistency between the proxy and backend servers will lead to security problems. So how dangerous this could be? In the reverse proxy, it can bypass access control list no matter it's blacklist or whitelist. It, it, it can also escape from current context mapping to access the management interface and other context on the same server. The apps always believe that no one can touch their internal service, but today, this is posed to outside, and they must be last of the fun for hackers. So am I affected by this? This is the architecture's problem and vulnerable by default without any programming errors. So if you are using reverse proxy with Java as your backend service, you, you are under threat. 
basically, this is a huge attack surface. Think about how many reverse proxy in the world could be bypassed so that you can touch many internal services from outside. For an easy example to understand, Tomcat exposed the application portal in localhost and maps to outside by a patch. Due to the normalization of a patch, uh, due to the normalization of a patch, we cannot direct access the backend management in the fast. However, we can use our traversal trick that does semicolon to, to traverse one label to touch the loot of Tomcat. A patch first handled this request. From the view of a, from the view of a patch, that does semicolon is a normal folder name. And match the context mapping rule. So it passed to backend Tomcat service. But in Tomcat, that does semicolon is the parent directory and will normalize with the portal. So as the result, we can, access, we can access all applications on the Tomcat, including the management in the fast. Everything looks good from their side, but when they put all together, everything starts going wrong. Okay, by knowing this theory, let's see real-world cases. The first case is Uber. Uber disallow direct access to the domain uberinternal.com. From the name, we know this is the domain for, it, for, for internal purpose. Once we, once we accessed, it redirect us to the one login, one, one login single sign-on service, and this redirection was done by Nginx. So we find the domain jira.uberinternal.com, and we also know that Jira is a Java-based application. Mm, it, se uh, it seems to be a reverse proxy. With a little bit searching, we find this, uh, this website exposed a status API. And this appears to be the white list for the monitor purpose. We apply our traversal trick. It looks good in Nginx and match the white list prefix. So pass to Jira. So as the result, we can access the Jira dashboard and see the internal projects. And this is another portal we accessed, an internal code review portal. Okay, so next, what can we do if we bypass the access control? We will give a code execution cache in binder. Basically, I find this code execution in another bounty program. Also, I got the code execution. I find my target is not in their bounty scope because it's on a third party service. But fortunately, there is also a bounty program in that service provider. So in the following case, I will use their size as the, as the example, example. This is the screenshot for the website. It's just a login patch without too much functionality. When I would like to hack something, the first thing I care about is the HTTP header. From the header, we can observe many interesting information. The header told you that it is running on the engine X. However, the response also set a special cookie, say session ID. It seems to be the default session name in Tomcat. But why engine X need this cookie? From our experience, we believe this is also the reverse proxy architecture. By the way, this is also a good methodology to know whether the target is running under reverse proxy or not. We applied our traversal trick and got a cool patch. This is a 404 patch, but the spatial is the patch was returned by Tomcat. This represents that we have already passed the first proxy and accessed the backend service. Another thing is, from the error message, we got an important hint. 
The hint is that our request pass will be the pass info in the backend index.cfn. From the hint, we can construct the server configuration in our mind. Nginx just rewrite the request to backend index.cfn. But for the dot dot slash, it will rest and 400 error because the path jump out of the web loot. However, our trick pass through the proxy and normalize the index.cfn. So we can touch the loot in Tomcat. So as you seen, the file extension is CFN, the code fusion markup language. From the extension, we can guess what backend engine it is. In this case, it is running on the Relo, an open sourced CFN engine. From the Relo menu, we also know that the management in the fast is under Relo contact slash admin slash web dot CFN. This is this, the screenshot for the management in the fast. But did you find something wrong? Yes, the interface just asks you to set a new password. But the first time, it was not like this. It's a normal login patch. However, when I refresh several times, the patch changed to this. I don't know why. With a little bit investigation, I find the root cause. When there is a large number of requests, the website will use cloud to scale up automatically. But while scaling up, it seems to forget to pull the password file. So this is the root cause. So we set a password to 123456 and get into the management interface. Once we enter the interface, the next, the next question is how to pop out a shell. In Verlo, there are several ways to pop out a shell. But due to the request being dispatched to different servers, we need to minify our steps. Here, we choose log injection. Verlo supports many features. One is the customized template file. So we modify the 404 patch to exception.log. And then we need to inject our malicious code into exception.log. We just access the URL and our malicious code will insert into log file. Okay, now, so every 404 patch is our backdoor and we can make a shell back. Okay, this is also another case study on exploring code fusion. The app folder is mapped to backend Tomcat. When you direct access the C file administrator on the web loot, it will show a 404 patch. But with our trick, the manage management interface shows again. Okay, we see the interface, but we, we didn't have a valid credential. We see the interface, the next thing is to guess the password. But I tried, but I failed. But from the copyright in the button, we know this system was built on 2014. It's vulnerable, it's vulnerable with CVE 2017-3066. It's a deserialization bug on flash action messenger format. So we can train our trick to touch the deserialization and trigger the remote, remote code execution. The last is our Amazon cast. While searching for targets, we find a spatial domain. From the name, it seems to be the collaboration system for internal purpose. And from the copyright, we know this system was built from an open source project, Nasio. Nasio is a content management system for business applications. 
It's written in Java. In that time, I just want to improve my Java auditing skill. So I start to review the code. So during the code review, we find several tiny bugs can be trained together to gain code executions. We first look into the access control in Nasio. While auditing the source, we find Nasio maps all URL to a spatial authentication filter. And the first bug is lying on that. From the filter, we know most patches require a valid session, but some entrances can bypass that, such as login.csp. But how the filter retrieved the current patch to compare with? It retrieved the path from the HTTP sublet request. So what's the problem? In order to handle URL path parameter, Nasio truncates the path by semicolon. As I mentioned before, the behavior in URL path parameter, parameter are various. Every web server has its own implementation. The Nasio's way may be safe in containers such as WildFry or WebLogic, but now it's run on the Tomcat. The difference between the Nasio and Tomcat will lead to security problems. So due to the transaction, we can forge a request that matches the whitelist in access control, but reach the unauthorized area in Nasio. However, we still could not do anything. In fact, most patches returned a new null pointer exception because the sublet logic was unable to obtain a valid credential. But this still gave us a chance to knock the door. From the configuration file, we noticed how the Nasio is based on thin framework. I have reviewed things several years ago and find numerous hacker-friendly features. So for me, the next step is training the first bug to access the unauthorized SYNC framework. So let's talk about the SYNC feature. In order to control the browser, SYNC framework introduced a series of HTTP parameters. Action method is one of them. It can invoke specific expression language from the query string. From the query, from the query string. Uh, yeah, from the query string. It seems dangerous. However, there are some precondition before uh, before the invocation. The invoke expression language must be in a certain format and in a file on the web loot. For example, there is a file named foo.xhtml, and you can invoke the, invoke the util.escape by the following URL. The feature looks good. You cannot control any file on remote server. Therefore, you can't invoke any expression language. However, there is one more crazy feature. To make things worse, if the previous invocation return, returns a string, and the string looks like an expression language, same framework will invoke again. Yes, it's double evaluation. With the crazy feature, if we, if we can control the returned value, we can execute arbitrary EL. So we need to find the good gadgets this is very similar to the ROP, Return Oriented Programming in Binary Exploitation. We choose the file with a long name. Why we choose this? It's because the request.get parameter returns a string that we can control from the URL. Also, the whole tag is supposed to assign a variable. We can still ask you the partial tag. So by training with the first access control bypass, we can now execute, execute arbitrary EL without any authentication. 
But it's still not over yet. We fail to pop our shell. Sing also know that EL is risky. So there is a backlist to block the dangerous invocations. However, it's just a simple string matching. And we all know that blacklist is always a bad idea. So we simply use the array-like operator to avoid the bad pattern. So let's summarize our steps and train all together. This is the overview for how the exploit. I will explain each part one by one in detail. First, the yellow highlight is the access control bypass. In order to bypass the whitelist, we choose login.jsp as our prefix. Nasio will scan all the request paths and truncate until the first semicolon. Due to the inconsistency between Nasio and, and the container, we can bypass the authentication and touch the create file.xhtml. So we choose the, we choose the file because it will be handled by same framework. Once we can touch the same sublet, we use the action method to invoke partial expression language in a known file. Here we choose the gadget under a file with a long name. So why we choose this? It's because the return value of the request.get parameter is a string and we can control from URL. So we prepared our second stage payload in the query string directly named for pop-up. As the crazy feature, same framework will invoke, invoke the value as expression language again. In order to avoid the bad pattern, we use array-like operator to bypass the blacklist. We also use Java Reflection API to get all methods from Java that land that runtime. The element index seven is the method get runtime to return a runtime object. And the index 15 is the method exec with a string type argument. Okay, the last thing is the shell command. Here we would like to pop a shell back and we got a shell. Okay, so how to prevent this type of attack? This is hard to fix because the URL pass parameter is a normal feature and not a bug in each side. According to my experience in bug reporting, most vendors cannot patch the bug completely in the first time. Their patch is bypassable. So we mitigate from two aspects. One is to isolate your backend application, remote management interface, and other contacts from your Java container. And the second is to ensure the behavior between the proxy and backend servers. But it seems there is no direct directive to disable the feature. So I write a patch for that. You can check the hyperlink after this talk. Okay, summary. In this talk, we first show the blind side about the pass parser and pass normalization, including the inconsistency, misuse method, and off by slash problem. Then, we introduce a new attack service on the reverse proxy architecture that can bypass access control and escape from the context mapping. The last, we show several case studies on not only open source application, but also that bounty programs. Okay, reference. Okay, the last page. Here's my contact information. Please let me, let me know if you have any further questions. Also, I have posted the slides and hold the case study on my blog. You can follow my Twitter to see that. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for being here. Thanks. So, am I on? Yeah. Um, before the break, anybody got questions? Everybody desperate for coffee. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, thanks okay. again. Thank you. Um,